Welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. We are here at Camp Ella in the heart of Capitol Hill, Washington, D.C. What a privilege. Congressman Tim Burchett is here. Thank you, dude. Let's go. And uh, slip this in between votes. I'm so grateful that he was able to stop by. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update. This is just an amazing man of God who's in Congress. God has him there serving the people and loves Jesus. I do. And I want to get just a little update. First of all, What's it like being a Christian these days on Capitol Hill? That's yeah, like being a Christian anywhere in the workplace, anywhere else. You know, yeah. you, um, it's not so much, and people say your votes are affected by it. I said, well, yeah, you know, I pray about everything. The Bible says you don't pray without ceasing. But the um, truth is I see it more as, a, you know, when I have friends in Congress on both sides of the aisle that are troubled or something's going on in their life. And I try to, I've always had a... Um, a heart for folks like that. You know, you talk in, in the Baptist church, we talk about God's gifts, and yeah. obviously mine are not good looks or brains, uh, but <laughs> due to my chosen profession, but um, I have a, a, a gift, I think, of perception. Okay. You know, I've, I've walked through crowds and I'll see somebody, and you know, maybe, and, and I'll say, hang on, I'll get past them, and I, you know, I gotta go to the bathroom, I gotta get food, I gotta get to see get to the cameras, I gotta get somewhere, you know, and, and I hang on for a second and I'll go back and check on them because something's, yeah. and a lot of times they'll say, oh, everything's great, but you know, it's, they'll come back later and say, yeah. man, I really appreciate that, you know, and, and so in Congress, it's a lot of that, you know, you've got, yeah. I mean, the stakes are incredibly high and yeah. I'm used to the media attention and the pressure and the, you know, the death threats and all that, but some people get, you know, kind of thrown in the deep end. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I try to, and, I've, and I'm, I've lost, I'm pretty sure I've lost friends to suicide and things like that. And I just think, you know, and buddies of mine have, have died and unexpectedly and I don't know where their soul is. Yeah. And so, um, and that and that, that pains me. Yeah. So I, I try, and yeah, I'm not saving souls or anything on the on the house floor or anything, but I, 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 I talk to folks and I pray for them and I try to, you know, I, I, I don't want to be the, another one of those jerk Christians that cut right. them off. You know, yeah. you got a John three sixteen bumper sticker and you cut them off and, the, <laughs> and, and, the, and, and then you flip them a bird, you know. Yeah. That, that's what they think of Christians and right. that's what they'll think of them. So I don't want to be right. that guy. And maybe I'm, and I'm not the great vessel, uh, you know, I'm not a great, you know, a representation for Christ. I just, I, but I try to be, I try yeah. to be in a lot of people's lives like that. So, you know, I, I feel it more of that than, than my votes of, on, you know, this right. moral stand yeah, yeah. I'm taking. Yeah. Well, what do you, I mean, I'd love to hear how is God moving right now? This whole thing with Mike Johnson coming up out of nowhere, this yeah. crazy, disheveled, chaotic process. How do you see God moving in that? How could you encourage people? In well, I, yeah, everybody's freaking out during all that thing, 22 days, and people are, you know, jumping ship and calling and threatening me and, you know, they're going to run against me or work against me. And I, I you know, and what's your plan? And I said, well, you know, if, if you, and as they're dog cussing me, I always think, you know, they're heading to their small group. I say, well, ask your small group about that Bible verse that talks about, you know, God knows if a sparrow falls from the sky right. and it knows how many hairs on your head. And I believe that. I believe that stuff. I believe God does know that, and he and he knows yeah. every working of your life and everything yeah. in the world, and he um, and, and so I, I feel like those things, everything is working is, is working for his purpose, yeah. and for have somebody like the speaker we have, yeah, in the in the times that we're seeing just the moral decadence, decadence. That's the yeah. whole thing. I mean, you know, we're talking about a. 100,000 kids that came over the border, we don't know where they are, and they could have been sold into sex trafficking, for goodness sakes. Um, right. How do you, and, and then, and, and you don't stand up and take a stand for that. Right. To me, it's just, where, where is the moral fiber of this country? Right. Where's the right. church? Right. Where, his, where are the believers? Come on. And, um, you know, it just, and it pains me. Yeah. That, that kind of thing. I do wake up in the middle. That, that's what I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about. I think about those dadgum kids. Yeah. You know, I, I married my wife, um, and um, my wife was a widow, and I adopted her little girl, Isabel, and she's mine, and I um, started dating her mama. Uh, when Is let's see, Isabel was five, and so, you know, and I adopted her since we married, and I adopted her since then, but I was down on the border, 
and there's this family. I know you didn't get me to ask about this, but there's this little family there, and I walked up, and I said, hola, and you know, in my redneck voice. <laughs> and the little girl was uh, about the age of my little Isabel when I, when I say when I got her, when I started dating her mama. And um, I put my little hand, hand on her little back, and, and she smiled, and, the, and uh, the Border Patrol agent said, Congressman, she doesn't speak English. And I said, I said well, I, I don't either, according to some people. And I, but I thought that little girl, you know, was, was my little Isabel's age wow. when I started dating her mama. And, wow. I, and, I, thought, I, and I thought, man, we, we got to do better. Yeah. We, God's greatest yeah. country right. that he's put on this earth, in the history of this earth, and we have got to do better. Right. And, that, you know, and it starts with me. And yeah. I make crazy stands all the time, and I pray about it, and I can't explain it to you. And I, I, and it, and I, I remember my daddy said, you know what I do at night, buddy? I said, what's that, daddy? And he said, I sleep. And what he was saying was he doesn't worry. Right. Because he does what's right. Right. And he did what was right. Yeah. And my mama did too. And I mean, they're both with Jesus now, but, you know, I hear them a lot of the things they've said to me right. as a kid growing up and daddy was an old combat marine second world war and when he get into a tough spot what was his process thought process and what was going on and right. i think about that a lot and um and those things do you feel like do you feel like with this i, I guess you could say regime change or whatever with mike johnson coming in yeah. and, which by the way i loved when he was giving that tour <clears throat> um i think it was the first couple of days of speaker he he, he brought the press into that <clears throat> Uh, that prayer room by the Capitol, which which I prayed in, and which we've actually prayed in the rotunda together and worship. I just thought that was really cool, highlighting that. You know, that's not would, wouldn't be a typical thing a speaker would want to show somebody. How hopeful can Americans be with that shift of him coming in, and yeah. and well, and and where are we at as a nation right I, now I, in that leadership? I think very hopeful because the fact I think he's going to pray about things, and it might not seem what the media and the, and the beautiful people and the K Street lobbyists wants. But I, Dad Gammon, I feel like he's going to do what, what he feels like is God's will. Right. And, and that's, that's, the, that's the shift this country needs to be getting on. Right. Because we've, we've gone down the feel good and, the, and the, um, you know, if it's, you know, we're going to fund you for everything kind of path and it's gotten us moral decadence, it's gotten us inflation out of control. Right. Just, you know, abortion on demand, you just name it. And right. those things, um, you know, there's a cost associated with all that. Right. And so in, in 2024, what's, what's, <clears throat> what's the hope for the House? What's the hope for America well, I, as I we think, head into these wild elections? Yeah, I think fiscal sanity okay. is something we should pray for because we're invested in, in things in other countries that are obviously sinful and are very right. distasteful to most Americans. And I feel like we should, um, we should pray for that because if we're, and we need to start taking care of our business and um, the things that we are constitutionally, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, those kind of things. Not, yeah. It doesn't guarantee happiness, but it does life and liberty. Right. And um, I think I think if we go down that path, we're gonna be okay. It's yeah. not gonna be 100% what we want, but it's gonna be a heck of a lot better than what we got. Yeah. How, uh, how do you feel uh, when it comes to uh, the tension with Israel? And we've been hosting these Nights of Hope for Israel with actually with Arabs, with Jews, with Christians. We've yeah. been gathering together and uh, felt uh, actually a lot of momentum and unity. What's That's your cool. sense right now? Uh, well, it's what it's always been. I feel like we've got some old leaders like we do in Washington, and it's just, his, it's just every little microcosm. You've got people that, uh, you know, they're selling memberships. If they're still killing kids, if they're killing each other, suicide bombing, doing all this, those knuckleheads are going to stay in power. Yeah. And they're going to keep preaching the hate because it keeps them in power, just like Washington. They're going to keep doing whatever it does to keep them in power, regardless of the financial, uh, the fiscal, moral, or whatever state this country's in. And it's the same with Israel. Um, you're going to have to have some kind of change up over there. You know, people in Gaza, the kids are taught early on to hate the Jews. And... Um, until that changes, you're not. You cannot right. break that cycle. Yeah, it's this it, case in point of the abortion issue. Um, you know, Roe v. Wade's overturned, but you've got kids. There be people thirty plus years. That's what they've lived under is abortion, and that's right. all they know. Right. And so obviously, all these states are starting to vote it back in right. because that's all they knew. That's right. the norm, and the norm is not correct. Right. But that is the norm. Right. And so um, I feel that way over there, 
And, uh, uh, but I also feel like we ought to let Israel do their business. Yeah. Or let them take care of it. As yeah. I said, Old Testament judgment. I've, right. I've seen those videos of, of, you know, the Hamas going into those places and shooting a little girl under a desk. I mean, you know, that's not, Americans aren't ready for that kind of stuff. Right. And we never are. You know, right. Daddy, when he was in the Pacific, the Japanese, the horrible things they did to the people of China. And, right. And, um, and uh, it was literally in one instance, a German doctor wrote the Nazi hierarchy a letter and said, hey, uh, these people are savages. We can't, we can't do better. And this was a Nazi saying that a group was savages. So, uh, you know, you, that's how ruthless they were. But that's, that's the same kind of stuff that we're seeing now with Hamas. Right. Yeah. And, and until, we, until we realize we're not... Yeah, this isn't some UN negotiation kind of thing. Right, right, totally, it's, totally, a hundred percent. You've got to go in. You got to let them do their business. Right. Yeah. Lastly, before you got to go, what what are what are some things we can pray for? You know, we want to rally people. Of course, we're yeah. We have twenty three cat. We've done uh, these revival. Let us worship rallies at twenty seven U.S. capitals. We got twenty three more to go this year. It's crazy what we're doing. But one of our big things is getting the church to pray, getting us to I, pray for this nation, for this government, for this. <clears throat> I, Give I, us some points of prayer. I, I think that Christians should pray what their involvement is. You know, Pris Christians for so long were arrogant. We sit on our butts on, on election day, and then we argue about why, how bad things are. When 20 million so-called evangelical Christians last election cycle, I'm not telling you how to vote, but you know how I'm going to vote, but 20 million so-called evangelical qu Christians decided to stay home. Now, that was state, federal, and local. Wow. And you have school board meetings where parents are coming in complaining about literally, literally pornography in the kids in the libraries for minor kids to read, and they're being labeled domestic terrorists. So these are things we've got to address, and, right. and it's a state, federal, and local level. Right. And when they say they stayed home on you know election day for the president, it's more than that. It's the you know you've got your your local races, your state right. races, and um, and Christians are just. I feel they're arrogant, and we're yeah. going to get thumped. Yeah. And we better pray, pray for, pray for our country, and pray for boldness in the church, yeah. because we're afraid of what the devil's telling us. The devil's yeah. telling us to stay, you know. Oh, we don't want to offend anybody. Right. Well, the Bible is, right. you know, no, the Bible is not a moving, it's not a squishy, it's not a sponge. Right. Yeah. It is a rock solid. That's a. That's a you know, bricks, but you can get it brick and mortar, but it, it is that. It's not yeah. moving, yeah. and it hasn't moved. And when we move it, we, um, I think we degrade the moral fabric of this country. Yeah. How can we, how can we mobilize, like, I mean, I hear these, these, these facts over and over again, you know, people, you know, they'll whine on Twitter, or they'll scream, or they'll do whatever, but they won't actually vote. How can we mobilize Christians this cycle to actually be there, not sit on their butts? What is it going to take? I mean, Biden's, well, Biden's, okay, Biden's got as far as he can. I'll tell, tell you how far it's gone, how bad it is. I called the, um, well, I called the head of the Southern Baptist Convention and um, on a boat that was made a, last year on an issue. And I said, look, you know, I am, I'm in the uh, turquoise emblem in the center of the Bible belt. You know, you big red, I'm a redneck, <laughs> so you got this big Bible, you got this big uh, belt yeah. buckle the size of a manhole cover, and, there, and I'm in the center of it. And I, and I said, and I did not receive one phone call from any preacher, any denomination on this issue. And it was an issue that really affected the church. And the head of the, uh, he told me, he said, well, Congressman, that was during, that was in between November and December or something like that. And he said, that's our busy time. And I said, well, brother, you're not going to be busy when they come lock your doors because that's ultimately what this is about. Wow. And, um, and, and so, you know, we're afraid, we're arrogant. And, um, I mean, you know, there's pretty a lot of evidence of what happens to arrogant folks in the Bible. Yeah. You know, the, uh, Israel was going around that desert for 40 years Yeah. because they were not adhering to what God was, or listening right. to what God was saying. And God's told us, and, um, and I'm afraid we could be in for a very rude awakening and these arrogant, and, and, and honestly, some of these preachers are not preaching the gospel anymore, yeah. and that and that scares me. So yeah. I think we need bold. And if your your church isn't doing it, either get rid of your preacher or get out. <laughs> That's a word. That's a word. Well, I I do. I'm, I'm with you on the bold, bold believers, and I I feel like, 
you know, in, in closing, I feel like we're, we're grateful for you. We're grateful for, for voices like you that oftentimes ruffle feathers, and that's what we need, you know. But we also, I believe, you know, our heart is to provoke the church to do something. And so, um, any last words to provoke the church? Pray and ask God what you should do on election day. And I guarantee it's not sitting on your butt watching The View. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, God bless you guys. Thanks. Thanks so much, Tim. It'll do something for ratings. It might get you in trouble. But that's <laughs>